Good morning. Got a couple people coming on. Andy Lund's in. Going to do our live here this morning. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit different. Um, today I'm going to include some of the big dogs. I think a lot of people kind of liked it. Yesterday I did uh, some stuff with the big dogs. The problem that we had um, was the connection. So uh, we struggled with connection. Welcome Cody. Welcome Andy. Um, I'm going to work on figuring out how to do that a little bit better in the future. Um, but so today, obviously, we're back inside. Um, I wanted to do a, a short one here with some big dogs involved with it. I'm also going to do spry on her routine for the morning. Um, we're going to do we're going to use feeding time here again with her. Um, if you guys watched last, it was last night we made our first retrieves, so that was a big deal. Um, she did really well. I thought the session went well, um, so that was really good. We we built off of. Um, what we had done in the morning. I'm going to get Ellie over here. So Ellie's on place. And Taylor's over here on place. So I'm going to bring those two over here because I'm going to have them involved for a couple different reasons. Um, our pup hasn't eaten yet. She definitely wants to. Her food is ready. Um, but what I'm going to do is, Ellie, come here. Come here. Come on. Now, Ellie, I don't mind calling off the bed. And you'll see... She's relatively hesitant to come off the bed. I don't call them off often, <clears throat> but I eventually when they get to be pretty good at place training, I'm okay with calling them off. You'll notice I never call off the pup. I always pick her up and carry her off. You'll start hearing the pup in the background squeaking. Um, she's excited. Uh, you can see Ellie's pretty excited. She's almost shivering with excitement here. Um, they know it's time to eat as well. Um, and the pup in the background definitely knows it's time to eat. So this is going to be a, a indirect lesson for the puppy to learn where she is in the pack. She's not going to eat first. Um, we never feed her first. So how old is Taylor? Taylor is three. Little, she'll be, um, let's see, she'll be four in August. So she's probably three and a half. Taylor, Taylor, come on. So Taylor, come off place pretty easy. Ellie, come on. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Very good, very good. So I'm going to bring these guys over. And here's what I'm going to do. Ellie, come here. Ellie, here. Taylor. Sit. Taylor. Come on. Taylor, come on. I don't do this with these guys, so this will be new. So this is, sit. Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, heel. No. Come on. Come on. Taylor, come on. Come on. You can tell they're pretty hesitant and re reluctant at this point. Sit. Sit. Taylor, come here. Sit. So I'm going to position them where I want them. Sit. Taylor, come here. Taylor, come here. Sit. Now I've got these two lined up. So the point of this is a couple things I'm trying to achieve. I've got their food. I've soaked their food as well. I like getting, so I, I even do it with the old dogs sometimes. I like getting that extra water into them with their feeding times. So very controlled. So here's what I'm going to do. Food is set. Dogs are set. You can see Ellie here is really set. Within seconds, I'm sure we're going to see her start drooling. So Pavlov Live right here, guys. We're going to show... Um, we're going to show this conditioned response in her to start drooling because I got the food ready and she knows it. She's hungry. And what I'm doing is I'm taking these two older dogs and the puppy. And the puppy is learning to, I know, I should back up. Just before I went live here, I took the puppy outside and let her go pee. Okay, she's been laying there. Um, I took her outside. She went to the bathroom. I brought her back in. So I know she doesn't have to go to the bathroom. But what she, her whining is doing is because of she's a little pissed off right now that, you know, why is everyone else eating before me? That's part of our pack. That's part of her understanding where she is in the pack. Uh, she's not going to eat first. She's going to always eat last. So patience, you know, here she's showing some frustration. So see the pillow? She's kind of chewing on that pillow a little bit. I've left that pillow in there because she likes it. It's comfortable. She lays on it. She doesn't have to stay on it. It's not a place training thing. It's just comfortable on the hard floor. If she gets destructive with it, 
and starts chewing on it, it's coming out. She won't have it anymore. So, um, but you can just see the frustration in her right now is that was what she went to. So um, that goes back to chewing, a lot of chewing issues. And I just got some more chewing questions. So we're going to change the culture of the chewers out there, I hope. Um, so these two have been forced to sit here and wait. Ellie's on the right, Taylor's on the left. They both are extremely submissive right now. That's Ellie wagging her tail. Good girl. See the licking of the lips? The other night we talked about it. Um, someone asked me, what do you mean licking of the lips? Watch when I walk up to them. Watch when I, especially Taylor. Taylor is extremely submissive. See Ellie? What are you doing? Now they won't do it for me. Watch, just watch these mannerisms. Watch the licking of the lips as I approach them. Taylor did it for me that time. The, the general posture of them is telling me, you're the leader, Dad. I, I totally get it. That's what I want. I made a post this morning. Well, I did it on Instagram. I posted a picture of a little puppy that's just staring. It's actually Fee, um, Spry's sister. And she's staring right at the camera. And it's just really great eyes. And I said, I think I said something about once you get their eyes, you know you've got them. I want these guys focused in their eyes. So you'll notice... There's no fear here. They're not afraid of me. They're quite happy right now. But I've really got their eyes and I've got their attention. So, I love them up a little bit. I don't rile them up. There's no reason to overexcite dogs. I like this behavior, so I will reward it. So now, back to, let's back up. I'm gonna position these guys a little bit tighter. Sit. If we back up a couple lives back, Someone asked the question about the name. Why aren't you preceding Spry's sit command with her name, um, her recall with her name, but you do send her on her name when you feed her? And the reason I do that is because I'm, I'm prepping for retrieves. I send dogs on retrieves on name. So what I'm going to show today, this morning, is we're just going to do a, a releasing of these two on their name. The other one's going to have to wait. So, and then I can reset them and I can take turns and I can, I can send dogs on their names. This is, where I can, this is where it can sink in and make a lot of sense to them. Right here simply in my kitchen during feeding time. But I'm not to that point yet with Spry on the other, on the other stuff. So why I proceed commands with names is because when I'm working two dogs at the same time, they have to know who, it's, who the command is for. So right now I read these two dogs and Taylor is calmer than Ellie. She's steadier than Ellie. Ellie's just got a slight hint of excitement to her. So Taylor gets rewarded with Taylor's going to go first. So we got the food here. Let's see if you can see the dogs. I want to make sure you guys can see the dogs. I'm going to line Taylor. 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 <laughs> Taylor, go ahead. Go ahead. She takes her sweet time. The food is nowhere near as rewarding to her as it once was. Retrieve, you'd have a lot more excitement out of her. Go ahead. Go ahead. So that's, she's kind of hesitant to even eat because she's going, I don't, we haven't done this thing for a long time. All right, come on. Come on back. Come on back. Now let's do this. Let's have, no, no, no. Look who naturally wants, come on. Come on. Heal up. Heal up. So let's get him in position again. That's it. Now, I'm going to send Ellie on her name. Ellie. A little more excitement and right to the food, right? There's a little dog that doesn't have nearly the... I mean, she's only a year and a half old. So she's, she's the one that we were using um, yesterday out in the field. She's got a lot more go for food. She's pretty aggressive. So let's pull her off of it. Ellie, come on. Ellie, come on. Yeah. Little tone. Get her back. She has another habit of going to the bed. Come on. Come on, Ellie. That was good. Heel. Heel. That's it. Now, I'm going to see if I can give you guys a better view of this. Because <clears throat> I kind of struggle when I'm by myself doing the camera. So, let's see if we can get this. So that you can truly get a good idea of what this looks like. The reason I'm doing this partially is because 
A lot of you guys, I think, have older dogs. You don't have the puppies. I can't think that everyone that's watching this has a puppy. So you can do very similar drills that we were doing with the puppy with the older dogs. So that's, that's kind of the reason I'm doing this. And if you've got multiple dogs, this is a good way of working multiple dogs. It's a good way of getting a lot of honoring. This dog has to honor the other one when it goes. This is a good way to just build solid this cultural thing of control into our daily life. So this takes a lot less time than it did with the pup because this doesn't take much. So now I want to send Taylor and I'm going to send her on it with a little more enthusiasm. So I'm talking real loud so you guys can hear, but I'm going to send Taylor with a little more oomph this time. Damn. Damn. Good girl. This time she actually goes to the food. She's still pretty hesitant to eat. Come on. Come. Now I'm going to line up Ellie and have Ellie do it. So you can definitely see that the food does not drive these dogs anywhere near like it does the puppy. So let's do it with Ellie. Ellie here. Sit. Ellie. Ellie gets right into it. So now, go ahead. I say her name and she comes off to her place. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ellie. So there you can get a really easy thing that you can do if you've got an older dog. So I'm going to take these two. I'm going to move them aside. Ellie's more than happy to eat right there. Taylor, come on. Yeah. Now, let's, uh, that's where, I just put them where they normally eat. So I can feed them right on their beds. Look who decides to get right into it. So part of the thing with Taylor was she goes, this is a little uncomfortable. I talk about um, changing locations with stuff. Well, that became pretty uncomfortable for her real quickly. Now, another thing I wanted to touch on too, guys, was who knows what this stuff is? I don't know. Steps into all this stuff. Um, this is stuff I'm going to give. So here's a little thing for you. Ellie, 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 come here. Hey. Pay attention. So I'll put the food back here for a second. But I'm going to show you this. Sit. That's a nice little treat for her. Steph calls them their macaroon cookies. So I got another one here for Taylor. So that's nothing more than coconut oil. It's organic virgin coconut oil. So... What the reason I'm giving that to him is um, people people ask us a lot about the food, and I think food really has a major impact on their coats and their performance. Um, I've seen dogs get sluggish when you give them not as good a food, so I think food is real important. But I also think we have to supplement stuff. There you go, Renee. Coconut oil. She knows about it. So um, let me give her her food back to finish up. But we do the coconut oil. Sometimes we're doing some fish oil stuff. We're doing different things to supplement the oils because right now, I don't know if you, any of you guys heat your houses with wood. We don't heat our house with wood, but we do have fires a lot. We burn in our fireplace. We burn a lot. So everything in our house right now is dry. Our cabinets are dry. Everything is really dry. And I start seeing the impacts of this in our dog's coats. So... Um, they get a little dry, they get a little flaky. So what we're doing is uh, supplementing um, that. So now I'm going to go and I'm just going to switch over and we're going to do some puppy stuff. I want to work today. I do want to work on some of the recall and I want to work on a little bit of sit. So I get a little bit of kibble. I'm not going to use much as I have been. Um, I'm going to set my hallway up and then I'm going to put my little tripod on it. And I'm hoping you guys will be able to watch this. This is not going to take long. I think what part of my problem, I've been thinking about this. I'm always thinking about how we can improve on our, some of our training stuff with the dogs. I think part of my problem is by doing these live videos, it gets a little long for them, for her. And she struggles that, in that for that reason. So i got to get a little bit crisper and shorter, sharper with my lessons. So let me grab Pup. 
I'll get spry here. I need to get her outside because she has been out recently. But she, and you can see how quick it doesn't take them long. So Taylor's over here. She finishing up. She's about. She's got just a little bit left. So that's where that's where pay, it pays off um, with the little puppies to get them to eat quickly. Um, because when I got the big dogs, they're in a the habit of they're gonna eat. Like it didn't take them long to eat. That helps me when I'm traveling. So let's take pup outside. Pup's got to settle for me here. I'm gonna let her go to the bathroom. <clears throat> let her do her thing. <clears throat> hurry up! 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 Good girl. Very good. Very good. Just that quick. That little tie-in with the command. Come on! 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 Good girl. Very good. That's it. Helps a lot because we're doing this during feeding time, and she knows it. The quicker she gets in, the best. So I'm just forming a habit of quickly back into the house. Let's take her over to the hallway. Today we're going to work in the hallway again. It's the third time, second day, third lesson in the hallway. So I've got my, I built my wall. I'm closing my doors, eliminating distractions. I'm going to set this up on my tripod. I'm going to do just some short, quick. Let's see. Um, let's see. I've got the thing on. Let's, I don't know if the volume is affected by this or not. But all right, you should be able to see me pretty good. You can see her when she jumps up. So she's ready to go. She's paying attention to me. Um, I'm not going to pay much attention to the camera. I talked about this yesterday, how I think this camera is getting in my way too um, of distracting me and connecting with the dog. So I've got kibble in my hand. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. That real sloppy. I'm not even giving a reward on that. Come here. Come on, sit. No, sit. Good. She's gonna go to praise pretty quick because I don't like this habit of her nipping. Come on, come on, come here, come on, come on. Sit, sit. Good, sit. Nope, nope, nope. A little rough this morning. Come on, no, come here, come on. Sit. Good, very good. The butt stayed down and I've given her a lot of praise for that one because we did really poor for three in a row. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Sit, no, 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 no. Sit, good, very, no, sit. No, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, sit, good girl, that was a great one. Come on. Sit. No. Sit. Good. Good. Good girl. I gave her a piece on that one. Come on. Sit. Good. Come here. Come here. Sit. Good. Very good. Very good. Now, you'll notice someone asked me the other yesterday when we had the big dog out, do you put your arms out? as a signal physically to the dog at a distance. Absolutely, and it starts here. I want her welcomed into me. Don't knock the wall down. Come here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Sit. See, she, she's fading off on me. I'm not gonna reward that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Sit. Good, very good. I like it. I'm really gonna praise it when she comes in and squares up with me and sits. I like that. One more. If she's fading, no, not going to reward that one. Come on, come on. Sit. That one was excellent. You guys couldn't see it. We're going to end it on this one. Come on. I'm cutting her off. So if she wants to get around me, I'm going to cut her off. That's the nice part about the hallway. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sit. Good. Good. That's it. 
There's some sits, some little baby recalls. Now let's bring her over here. All I want is some nice, well actually, let's do this. Let's do it in the same spot. I don't know why I'm moving here. So I'm gonna put it in the same spot. Let me grab her bowl of food. This time I'm gonna have it face towards you guys. So I'm just changing it slightly. So I'm gonna put the bowl of food there. You guys don't have to see the bowl of food. I'd rather see you see the steadiness. So now, the other thing that's different is, this is a completely different view. So look at what you guys can see what that looks like. She's seen that several times now. She's made retrieves down there and she's gotten food down there. Look at what the view looks like from this angle. It's completely different. So that little bit of change can and probably will affect her. So I want to make sure that I get the same I get the same action out of her regardless of what it looks like. So we're just spinning it around. Today I'm going to start with her. She's settled really nice right now, guys. She's real calm. So tonight what I'm or today what I'm going to do is I'm going to set her down on my left side like I want, the finished product kind of. Put her on the left side have her sit. I want to time my command of sit with her action. I got a feeling she's going to sit instinctively. I want to time it with the verbal cue. Have her sit. I'm going to push the time a little bit if I get if I feel like I can get away with it. So I might count to five, six, seven. I might even make some noise and not be her name to test her. Because remember back a few days, I may, I talked to the camera and all of a sudden she broke. I don't. I want her to understand. Just because I talk doesn't mean you go. It has to be spry. That's what has to send her. So I might, I might even bring in some, some verbal distractions. I missed it. I missed the sit. She's sitting so quickly now. This habit is formed so quickly that I'm missing the timing with the, with the command. So I want to tie it in with the sit. I want to get everything I can get out of this. Sit? No. There, she took off a little bit. Gotta crack that. Sit. Good. No, 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 no. That was on purpose. That was exactly what I was thinking was going to happen. That's exactly what did happen. She sat too long and she got loaded up. And what happened was is she just anticipated he's going to send me. He always does at a certain point. And we haven't gone much further than that. So she's got a habit right now of at a, she'll count in her head how long it takes for her to go. Now I have to start building on that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't mind that mess up because now it's a correction that will make sense to her. So we're going to push it again. Now we're gonna we're gonna push and extend her understanding of it doesn't it's not a time thing it's not like you count it off in your head and you go it's you have to cue when he sends you so let me reset her sit good. Good girl. Now I probably pushed it right to about as far as she could take. Um, that the first time she wiggled and adjusted her butt, and she she kind of made adjustments three, four times before she actually broke. So this time, she was much more steady in her sitting. She didn't wiggle around. She didn't readjust. She didn't move much, which I'm good with. But what I now I needed to do is I need to have her ex continue to extend on that. And, be, and I, I didn't make a peep, because if I had made a peep of sound, I shoot have went. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to reset it. This time I'm going to say something. It's not going to sound anything like spry. It's going to sound like something completely opposite, and it'll be a test. And I'll be ready, because if she goes, I'm going to correct. So we're just, we're just adding layers to a drill that she's gotten pretty good at it. We're making this a little more complicated. Sit. Good. Good. Sit. 
Timmy. John. No, real close. <clears throat> it's that. It's that. I can just. I can tell when she's gonna do it based on my internal counting. She's got like. She's got it built in her head right now. After I get to about ten, and that's when she gets fidgety. She's got it in her head right now. I'll stay still for ten seconds. He's gonna send me. So what I have to do is I have to get her out to about a twelve before and have it a good twelve, and then send her. So we're just gonna slowly build on it. So that time I had three words in there that meant nothing. John, banana, pizza. Here's that point. Sprout. Good girl. Very good. Very good. I get excited about that one for her to really understand that was good. So we extended it, we threw some words in there, and she was able to focus through it. Took, so this drill is real basic, and she's gotten pretty good at it, but we added some things to it today to complicate it, and she's working through it. I'm going to do it one more time, and that's it, and then I'm going to let her eat, and we're going to wrap this up. So I'm going to reset her for the last time, and I'm just going to push it. I'm not going to say a word at all. I'm going to count in my head, and I'd like to get push 15. Sprout. So funny because that you couldn't probably see it, but at twelve she went like this. She just she sunk in like she was loading up like well here it is I'm ready to go. So I waited. That was awesome. She readjusted. I counted to fifteen and I sent her. I got to fifteen and I sent her. So that was great. We'll build off of that. So I I look at this lesson as very simple um, overall. It's not real complex. We didn't. Do, try to get a whole bunch of stuff done. I don't think we pushed her limits at all, but I do think we gained on what we've been working on. So I'm going to let her. Okay. I was off there. Um, so that that's a real good lesson. Let me take this off the tripod. So that I would say was a lot of success. Uh, we did, we expanded on some of the stuff that we have been working on. It was more simple. Um, that was good. That was real good. I'm gonna check on her. You, you'll you notice she doesn't fool around when it comes time to eat anymore. She doesn't dawdle at all. She gets to it. Let's go through. Um, for some reason I have it must set up without questions coming up. So I'm going to, I'm gonna try and see. Hmm. I guess I can't see him today on the on the uh, on the phone. So here's what I'm gonna do. She's finishing up. I'm gonna grab her bed. I'm gonna put her back in her spot where we typically wrap this up. She's got the last piece for us. I'm gonna pick her up. I'm gonna put her on place. Then I should be able to look at some of this stuff on the computer. So she goes to place. I grabbed the bowl. So that one was pretty good. I like that one. Let me jump on the computer here. I'll aim it down. Let me switch this around. And put it on her. Um, let's see. Got to see if I can get this up. Okay, we do have some questions. So um, I'm going to set this in here. Uh, let's see. 
little thing's not working so hot right now. Well, I guess that's not going to work. So I'm going to hold it on her here and I'll work one handed. So, at least she knows. Okay, this is a little bit different for me to try to read these. Jay Roberts, at least she knows barking at me when prepping her food slows the process down things. Yes. So when we were feeding her, when we were feeding the other dogs and she was getting fussy and whiny, I didn't give her any attention. Um, we weren't going to get, she wasn't going to get anything until she settled down. So not only to get going outside, but also, um, also to get inside and get stuff going. Good morning, Jeff. Um, my pup is literally vibrating vibrating in the morning when I do the sit and stay. Yes, I watch our video when I did it at the shop. Um, I, she, they're shivering. They almost shake because they're so excited. Watch the video um, you know, earlier from this morning when I had Ellie going. Ellie was kind of shaking. She was, she was excited. That's good. Don't I, I like to wait until I get a change and it usually is associated with a deep sigh. You usually get the and once you get that, that tells me mentally they're there, physically they're there. Um, so, so be patient with that and wait for it. Are you feeding twice or three times a day? We're going twice a day, Jay. Um, morning and evening. I try to be consistent, but you guys know as well as I do, I'm not. Uh, I do my best, but life gets in the way sometimes of our uh, schedules. So what we do is we are trying to push the idea of train the dogs around your life schedule. Don't schedule life ske around your training of your dogs. So. Um, we sometimes have to adjust and I think that's okay. Um, I think you have to be careful. I think, um, I heard Mike Stewart say it once, a fractured life makes for a fractured dog. So they look for stability. So if you live a very, very fractured lifestyle, um, and I don't mean like morally or anything like that, I just mean like you are all over the place, that's very difficult on your dogs. I am all over the place a lot. So it has. I have to take that into consideration and try to help me um, to help myself when it comes to training. Uh, do you feed the pup coconut oil also? Should I let my eight week old pup sleep as much as she wants during the day or try to keep her up? Um, good question, Becky. Uh, two parts to it, coconut oil, yes, not nearly as much as I do the big dogs, but yep, we give her a little bit. She didn't get it today, she'll get it in a little bit. Again, guys, the coconut oil, if you burn wood at your house, if, um, if, if, if like this time of year in general, we get very dry air and everything is dry. My hands are dry, everything is dry. Um, so one of the things that suffers is our dog's coats. So we supplement with coconut oil all year long. We use fish oils, Steph uses salmon stuff. Um, Steph is more, does the research on it. I do the execution on it. So, and, and she does too, but I give, I give the dogs occasionally um, these oil supplements and what it does is it helps. You can see, I don't know if you can see it, but just in the last few days, she's getting that kind of light dander. It's not really dander, it's almost powder. So she needs it. So, and I, it's a, it, it, it happens this time of year for whatever reason. So uh, the coconut oil, we will give it to the pup as well. Your question about letting her sleep as much as she wants, no doubt about it. Here's the thing about little puppies. Um, <clears throat> people think you need to exercise these little, this little dog hardly gets physical exercise. She doesn't run around that much. Um, when she does run around, it's under control, so it's not that much. But what, what, what people don't understand is, <clears throat> I think exercise is real important. And I think if you don't exercise, they get kind of pent up with, with um, energy and they usually use it destructively. They use it in the wrong way. So the th nice thing about dogs is they really want a job. And so if we give them a job, they're pretty happy. They're content. They're not looking to create problems. Um, sometimes the job might be walking to the mailbox with you to get the mail. Sometimes the job might be coming with me to my office and laying, in the, laying under the table. Um, so the job doesn't have to be a field driven job. Do they like working in the field? No doubt about it. Do I have more success with them um, being settled in a little bit better when I, when they get their, their work in outside physically? Yes, no doubt about it. Do I think it makes them feel better? Yes, I think it does. But these puppies, the thing that's interesting about the puppies is growing alone takes a lot of energy. 
I think these puppies get tired and worn out just because they're growing so fast. So I don't think it, Matt, I don't think it, I certainly don't think you would, I would try to change the sleep patterns. Um, one thing you might want to do is get a sleep pattern <clears throat> to try to work in your favor. So when they're awake, they might only be awake, this dog might only be awake for, before, in between naps, like she really lives a pretty good life. In between naps, I bet you the most she's awake is 30 minutes. Like she just doesn't have an extended period of time that she's awake. Same with these guys. I don't think they're awake that often. I think they sleep an awful lot. So, and I'm fine with that. So, but with these little ones, what I think could help you, especially when it comes to getting them to sleep in the kennels over the night or in the crate over the night, um, I think it's not bad to keep them up for that half hour, 40 minutes, whatever their max is, just before you put them down. Um, and certainly outside to go to the bathroom before they get put down. So, um, but no, I, I wouldn't worry about trying to lessen her sleep. I think they need it. I think their bodies let you know that they need it. Um, I like the timing of these morning sessions, by the way. They go well with my lunch breaks at work. Austin, where are you working lunch? Are, are, we, uh, are we a second shifter or are we, or I don't know what shift that would be, or are we a different time zone? Because we're central here, so I'm glad it works for you, Austin. At what point in the place training do you start feeding them on their mats? I don't. Um, and is this a regular thing or just whenever you feel like it? I don't. I, I did this morning with our older dogs just because we're not place training them anymore. They're, I mean, they're, they're exercising their ability to be on place. So with them, I get away with it. I certainly wouldn't with the puppy. I think it's too confusing. The place is a, the place is a spot for the first few months that we, that's the training we get in on place is, is, is place training. That's what we get out of the mat. We don't use it for feeding. We do, I don't use it for sit. I don't use it for any of that other stuff. I want the dog on the mat to focus on one thing stay on my bed place training i'll get them down and i'll move them around and because i want to get their feet moving and stuff so when we start doing recall work and sit work you can see i'd really struggle on the mat there's just not enough room for her to to change behavior um I, when i'm working on heel and recall i want them moving around and then sitting moving around then sitting because part of it is recall and without a good distance the habit of recall come to me doesn't get ingrained as well so um I use the place mats, the cots, exclusively for place training for at least a few months. Um, okay, Chris Borgman, I have been working with my three and five year olds on this exact drill. Allie, the five year old is not food driven, with, but Windsor, the three year old is. My struggle is getting them to go separately, especially when I try to get Windsor to wait. Okay, so Windsor is the one that is food driven on it. Let me read back here. Um, Yes, so Windsor is, so So what I would do, Chris, is Windsor would never go first. Windsor would be always second. Um, Allie is older. Allie is not driven by food as much. So Allie gets to go first, and it's a really good lesson for Windsor to honor. Um, the other thing that you can do is, you'll notice I had them shoulder to shoulder. They were pretty close. If I didn't have them to be very, very steady dogs, um, I'd separate them because it'll make it easier. If they're that close to each other and one goes, it's very tempting for the other to go. <clears throat> so start with them spread apart and it might be spread them apart 10 yards. Go over to one, go over to Alley and send Alley. And Windsor just has to sit. Now if Windsor can't sit and watch that from 10 yards apart, so I'm, I'm referencing the idea of them being close together as a distraction and hard for them. Um, first off, Windsor has to be able to do this by himself 100%. Like he has to be very good at it. Can't do this with group training if you can't do it individually. So by separating them, it eliminates one of those distractions of, oh, that dog just moved and she's right next to me and I really wanna go. So instead, put distance in it and allow for it to be successful and it to make sense. Then slowly bring them closer and closer together. Now. If you say, well, I can't do that when I get 10 yards away, I can't get her to stay either. I can't get him to stay either. Well, here's, here's the issue. It's not this drill. The issue is remote sit. So now I work on remote sit and steadiness without the food, without anything. We just work on making sure that I can get a dog to sit and stay. And I, when I say stay, I mean stay put, not the command stay, because I would never send it off of the command stay. That muddies the water swarm. So that, the, if, if that is the issue, go back, 
fill in the hole, reverse engineer the whole issue and go, here's where I have a problem. It's not with this drill, it's with Windsor sitting and staying at a distance or being able to resist temptation at a distance. Fix that first, then start working towards being able to work another dog into it. So you might have issues that are bigger than just this drill and that's okay. I th th That goes back to what we were saying before. Recognize the situation, recognize the weaknesses. I call them holes in training. You got a big hole in the road, you don't just keep driving around it. You fill the son of a bitch in, right? That makes life a lot easier. So go back and fill in this hole for you, Chris. Um, potentially is what you need. Uh, Andrew Krug, my, my puppy has a bad habit of looking at me and my wife when my wife gives him a command, she'll give him the command, and if I'm the one in the room, he'll look at me, what is, this, what is she saying, anything to help with this? Yeah, you're the leader, no doubt about it, Andrew, you're the leader. Uh, so Pup is really looking to you, so this goes back to my, my Instagram post about the eyes. I love it when I have the dog's eyes. You have, apparently, your dog's eyes. Now, your wife needs to get your dog's eyes. So Andrew, here's where it, consistency has to be there throughout your family. So it's real easy. Start having your wife work in on some of these drills. You probably, I'm guessing, this is an assumption, I'm guessing you probably have more physical hours in the field or more physical hours of contact working with the dog in training situations. So it's, it's no surprise that the dog is really leaning on and looking to you as a leader. Now what you need to do is maybe you have to train your wife. That, 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 prob that probably didn't sound well, it doesn't sound that good. Maybe you need to help your wife understand the training. So train the trainer before you train the dog. Um, that's where we do, a, uh, you know, with our workshops, when people bring dogs, if it's a family of five, I don't want dad coming because dad probably ha is light years ahead of everyone else. What I want is the whole family to come because we need consistency across the board. We need to train everybody to handle the dog the same way. That's the only way the dog, it's fair to the dog and that the dog will understand. So. Um, what, we need, what I would do is I'd get into some very simple work, heel work for instance. Heel work is something that is very connected in order to do it correctly. Now if you don't do it correctly, the dog takes you for a walk. I can't stand that. I've seen that a million times. You're walking down the road and the dog's taking the person for a walk. No, I don't like it. So what we need to do, it, what you could do is a lot of heel work and have your wife doing it and make your wife, last night if you watched the end of our video with um, Sierra, our daughter, and Ellie, you'll see that there was really a difference between the way Ellie was walking with Sierra and I was walking with Ellie. And I was doing it off lead, which it should have been harder off lead to get good, get good results. Hell, she had her on lead and she couldn't get the results I was looking for. So what did that, what, what changed in that equation? It was five minutes later, Ellie didn't forget how to heal. Ellie just didn't receive the feel from Sierra, our daughter, that she had to do the same thing and should react to the same way and all that stuff. So what, is, what does that tell me? It doesn't tell me I have an issue with my dog. It doesn't have an issue, tell me I have a, the dog has an issue. It tells me that we have an issue with the connection between Sierra and Ellie. And so I would work on that. Once again, I found a hole, fill it in. So you need to get, the, you need to get your wife involved with this and get that connection built there. Renee Collins knew about the coconut oil. Uh, Nicole Schulte did the food drive these older dogs when they were pups, yes. Or have they never been food driven? Yes, totally. They were they were no different than Spry. They really got excited at feeding time. Taylor's an old maid, you know, she's a she's a mother of five now, so she's she uh food isn't what drives her. Uh, now if I had to have retrieves out there, I probably should have done that. I probably should have put bumpers out there and sent them and I could do that. Next time I can do that. But you'll see the difference in the excitement level. Now Taylor, even th at that point, is just a very calm dog. And she doesn't show the excitement at all. Steph ordered Beachbody. Um, she doesn't even order. She doesn't actually get that much. Hey, Hello. how are you? Good. Thank you, you much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Come, Come on, on, Taylor. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Take care, man. Yeah. Uh, your Beachbody has arrived, Steph. So, um, so she, even her. Now, there was a good thing. Did you hear Ellie? I don't like that when she barks when someone comes to the door. She's gotten into a habit. She's cowering right now because she goes, I know dad's pissed. I don't like that. That's something I'm working on with her. I take her to our shop and when people just walk into the shop unexpectedly, I oftentimes get a little announcement of, hey, hey dad, someone's here. 
Um, obviously, pup got up. Hey, someone's here. I don't like the habit of them barking. So what I'll do at the shop is I'll let her know. I know. I understand someone's here. That's enough. And I just let her know, and that usually settles her down. Now, you can tell she still was uneasy. I don't mind that to a degree, especially like if my wife is here and I'm not. I don't mind if my dog is a little bit, but it's got to be, it can't be excessive. Um, so we worked through that little uh, distraction. So back to Nicole. Uh, not sure if that's something that says that a dog pup can change. Yes, it will change with age for sure. Um, right now, this little puppy I don't think would be nearly as excited about a training dummy as making a retrieve as she is her bowl of food. So later on down the road, the food will likely lessen as far as excitement and the retrieves will likely build. Uh, right now, she's not sure what retrieves are. We just started last night. We started with a sock. So if you guys, did any of you guys catch last night's retrieves? I was really pumped about those. Um, so watching an Auburndale, Andrew is watching an Auburndale. And I'm, I'm not sure where Auburndale is. Uh, those tails are wagging. Yep, so I'm way behind on these because this is when we first, lots of thumbs there. I'm not sure what we said that people liked, but you, know, you guys know how I feel about that. I love it when you guys do that stuff. So you suggest not feeding all the dogs in the house at the same time. No, I suggest you do it, Austin. I think you should feed all the dogs. I think it. I think you um, feed them all in the house at the same time and you mix it up and you let them all understand that they have to stay sharp on their toes. Um, one day, the one who behaves the most desirable gets the reward, they get to eat first. Um, if that's Taylor, which it's Taylor all the time, well then I'll mix it up once in a while, just to keep her honest. But no, I suggest Feeding, I do suggest feeding him, not not not. So, um, how old's Taylor? So we're back to the back to there. Uh, apparently, I wasn't scrolling the right way, and there's other questions here. Um, so let me go back the other way. So Taylor's Taylor. Uh, I'll go back to Chris's question. Taylor turns three, turns four in August. Um, Taylor is the Whitetails Unlimited dog. If you guys aren't familiar, we've, we've partnered with Whitetails Unlimited. She's their mascot. Um, so let me scroll back the other way here. Question about the food. Okay. Um, now I'm really confused. So I'm back up to the question, Jay Roberts. At least she knows barking at me when prepping your oh, okay we read that one already renee mullins had a question here question about food do you go by the recommendation on the bag or do you decide how much to feed some other way we feed emma twice a day diamond naturals two cups at feeding as per bag recommendations i don't think the bag knows your dog so i i wouldn't recommend doing it by the bag i think the bag is a general road map um which i think a lot of this training stuff is a general road map so one thing I, I think, uh, that, great question, Renee. So it, I get I get sidetracked, but one thing I want to remind you guys is that when we do these, don't watch these and then go, I have to mimic the exact same thing he did with him and his dog because it might be different every day. It is different every day, and it's different with every dog. I don't take the same exact approach to training. I think some trainers do, and they'll tell you that this is the way it happens, this is the way you do it. I think those are problems, the problems come up with certain dogs that don't get it that way. Well, not all kids are the same and not all kids learn the same. So great teachers figure out how to get to kids by their strengths and their weaknesses and figuring that out. So it's reading the student to get the most out of them academically. Okay, that's a person analogy. Dog is the same way. So don't follow exactly what I'm doing. Don't think you need to do it the same amount of days. Don't I hate getting, I mean, you guys can ask it, but I hate getting asked how long of this, how much of that, how much, because it varies so greatly. And so I, what we really want to do, and, and that falls back on me to build your guys' confidence in your decisions with your training to go, you know what? I got to assess my dog in my situation. And, and so Renee, this is an off spring off of your question about food, but that's my food is the micro uh, dog training is the macro. So everything is going to, this answer is going to apply towards a lot of this. But so back to the question of the food, I don't think the bag knows your dog well enough to, to know exactly how much. So like this little puppy, 
I don't know how much I'm feeding her measurement wise. I know how much she's been eating without leaving any extra. And so as a pup like that, I let her eat until she's full. And so the last, uh, if you look back on the videos, probably four days ago, I feel like I'm fine tuning that every day, but about four or five days ago, she was leaving food in the bowl and that was a sign to me that I was giving her too much. So I backed off a little bit. Now she's cleaning it up. So I think we're about there. So I think you gotta do that too. Uh, we have another smaller dog that is eight in the house and our pup likes to try to get her to play by barking at her. What do you suggest by stopping the barking? Separation. Don't, don't, uh, don't allow that. So it, that's an undesirable behavior which will, allow, which will make for a dog to be removed from the situation. So uh, I'd take pup and put it away. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't allow it to get into that. So disassociation is punishment at times. Dog wants to be with you. Dog wants to be with your pack. And if it's not doing what it's supposed to do in the pack, it gets it has to pay the price so it goes away. Um, been noticing the white dandruff on Zeke past few days. Yep, coconut oil works well. I saw dander on river. Yep, so you guys are seeing the same thing. Jeremy, have you noticed as labs they get to start to get lumps on their body, fatty tumors? Uh, I, I guess a, a lot of dogs do when they get older. Um, John, I don't see it with our younger dogs as much. Um, but with the older dogs, I think it's pretty common. Um, good morning to Melissa Stone. Uh, good morning. I actually have a question about your dog cots. Where do you get those from? I like the brown color, but all the ones I found are green or blue. April Marie, uh, April has them on the website. Somebody jumped in. I was going to say, God damn, you guys are good. Uh, you can get them through our website. Guys, we are to the point where we are out of cots and I'm back. I'm, I'm right. I got a couple sizes left. We are ordering today. We'll have them in soon. So if you do place an order, it may be back ordered. You can dig it, dig it out on Amazon as well. But um, if you want to buy them through our website, I'd greatly appreciate it. But we are running out now. There's going to be a, a lull here. Um, but we will get them for you if you place the order. You just might have to wait a little bit. Um, thank you, Jay. Thank you, Robin, for sharing that with April. You guys are way ahead of me. Um, Thanks for another great session. Kelly, I appreciate it. She's a horse trainer. And it's amazing how similar concepts are. We make them be calm, steady before feeding, getting. So I don't, so I love horse trainers, Kelly. Um, so thank you for that comment, bringing this up. Um, one thing that I, I've never ridden a horse. I'd like to someday. I've never ridden a horse. I see so many similar, I, I, I learned, there's a guy named Buck Brannerman. Okay. Someone, someone got, some person bought our products. This is years ago from Tennessee. And he sent me a message, sent me an email. He said, have you ever heard of this guy? His name is Buck Brandman. Started talking about this horse training thing. And I, I hadn't, I didn't know who he was and I'm not a horse guy. And he said, you should watch this movie. So he sent me a link to the movie. So I watched the movie and this guy is Zeus. I mean, like I just, I love listening to him. I love watching him. I, there are so many similarities to one, one thing was, I used to, for a long time, I felt the way he talks. I didn't know how to say it. And so by watching him, I bought these DVDs of his. I, I watched all these YouTube videos, all this stuff. And what really I gained from him was confidence in what we're doing. Because he does some stuff that's different than the norm when it comes to horse people. And I do a lot of things that are different than the norm when it comes to dog guys, especially retrievers. So I... I've built self-confidence to say, you know what? I can talk about it. I I'm going to, I'll get criticized by a lot of people. I don't really care. So my objective is not to please everyone. It's to please the people that want to learn. So if I can do that, that's good. But this guy, um, he's incredible. And so I really learned from him how to say a lot of stuff, uh, just how to put some of the things I was thinking into words. So um, horse riders make great trainers. Uh, horse people make great trainers. Um, so April May just started watching last night. She's enjoying them. I've been training dogs for almost 30 years and I love seeing how other trainers do things that I totally agree. April, um, I think you should watch as much stuff, read as much stuff. If you watch back and, and on a few of us, we talked about that. Um, you need to, you need to get as much information as you can about something you're passionate about and then weed it out, figure out what works for you, what doesn't. So, um, totally agree with you April and I wanted to um, I want to make sure that people go you know what don't replicate I've had people try to ask me to write a calendar 
um, 365 day calendar and tell them what to do on each day. Those people need to change the way they think about stuff when it comes to dogs. A lot of that, a lot of that goes to personalities. I think some people, they make probably really good computer programmers because they just think analytically that way. They want to know the steps. They want to know the process. They're good at baking. They're maybe not good at cooking. Cooking, a lot of freedom in it. Dog training, there's a lot of freedom in it. You got to be fluid. You got to adjust. So I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Um, a couple things. I've asked you guys in the past, and I should say this stuff, like our, I go so long, um, I got to start shortening these up. But um, one thing is, last night we had several people share that have been sharing a lot of our stuff. And I really appreciate that. So I'm going to read up now. These are people that shared it that it shows up. Some of them, I know, I know some people shared it, but you, your privacy settings don't allow me to see that you shared it. So I'm not trying to leave you out of this, but because I know that these people shared it, I want to I thank them. It's Megan Smith, Brian Britton, Jim Heth, or Heath, if I mispronounce your names, I apologize, Jeremy Miner, Matt Green, Vanessa Birch, who I think is with Alan Harmon, they both did it, Mike Mecca, Robbie Schmidt, and Mike Schulte. So those people have shared a ton of stuff. So if you're on right now, um, now I'm not going to type this out. So if you're on right now and you hear this stuff, send me, Pete, just send me a direct message, send me your address, I'd like to send you something. Thank you for this. Um, that's the way we're going to grow this, guys, is by people sharing it and making comments and, and be, making it more interactive because that's the value in doing it live. Videos are videos. Live interaction allows us to go in a lot of directions. It also makes me go a little long at times, and I understand that you guys got some other stuff to do. So I'm going to work on my best to be more precise with my with these. Um, I'm also going to start to grow this to Instagram. So Instagram is going to get some love today. We're going to give them a real short live. So uh, if you're on Instagram, at Dogbone Hunter, it's the same thing. Um, you, you'll see different stuff there. Um, I know there's a lot of, not, not a ton of, uh, there's some crossover, but I know a lot of people aren't on both platforms. We're missing out, I think, on a lot of people on that platform. So we're going to try to try to expand and, and grow to that as well. So thank you guys for following again. Uh, we'll continue this as long as you guys keep giving the love back. So talk with you guys soon. Have a great day.